Hey guys, what's going on? So in the video today, I'm very excited because in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about these new Niagara boots that I just got in from Parkhurst. This wasn't officially released on the website. This was part of a group MTO. One of my friends actually initiated it. He wanted a blue mock toe. It is just beautiful. It's got a gorgeous silhouette. We have a nice unstructured toe here. It's very sleek. It's a very dressy looking boot. So let me read off some of the specs first. So this is the Niagara boot in navy French vegetable tanned calfskin. This was part of the second MTO round. This is part of Parkhurst's new Made in Spain series. I'm sure you've been keeping up with the news lately. Parkhurst did start to outsource their production to Spain for a few reasons, mainly because of the disruption that occurred in the last two years to the supply chain and everything. It actually costs Andrew more to have these boots made in Spain, but like he says, these are the best boots that he's made yet, and I have to agree. I also have a, a new pair of his Chelsea's, the Elmwood Chelsea, which I'm just blown away by. And so let me read off about the new Parkhurst mock toe. So this is our first ever mock toe boot, the Niagara. So this is on the 602 last, aimed at a balance with a focus on more natural support. This last is the modified version of the 602. The modifications include a small addition of width in the pinky toe area, along with a slight addition of depth in the vamp and toe box. Most of our customers go down a half size from their typical sneaker size into Parkhurst boots. So this new build focuses on enhanced breathability and shock absorption in a more natural way by using more vegetable tan leather components. These components include the following. Vegetable tanned bends, leather insole, midsole, welt, heel counters, and heel stack, a steel shank, and cork filler, 360 degree Goodyear welt construction. He currently has the Niagara in light brown waxy commander which is just gorgeous and in mahogany which looks similar to like a brown chrome excel in the navy blue veg tan calfskin so this style was a pre-order from the group mto this past summer these pairs were extra pairs produced from it and are ready to ship sizing is limited the second gmto cutoff was monday october 3rd 2022 if you don't see your size and would like to order a pair, send an email to info at parkhurstbrand.com and we will get you in for end of year completion. Thank you. Our first mock toe boot style, the Niagara. This boot is made with a full vegetable tanned French calfskin, along with the other leather components used in our build now. You can expect this boot to mold and conform to your foot nicely. Due to its full vegetable tannage, the navy leather will develop a patina over time. Let's go over the specs. So we've got a faux mock toe here. That means it's just a cosmetic mock toe. Uh, the apron and the vamp are all one piece. The vamp is just one piece of leather. The stitching here is simply cosmetic, similar to the indie boot. It's got a 360 degree Goodyear welt with a split reverse welt, i.e. some people call that a storm welt, but this actually is not a storm welt. This is a split reverse welt, meaning that the raw edge of the lip here shows. On a storm welt, there isn't a raw edge. It's actually like folded over on itself. And then so we've got five standard eyelets, three speed hooks, which I'm a big fan of. I really like the three speed hooks. Yes, yeah, so we've got a full grain leather midsole, full grain leather outsole. My favorite part of this boot, hands down, is the leather sole. You guys know I go on and on about leather soles. Love the leather sole not only for the firm support that it offers, it's also incredibly moisture wicking. And another cool thing that they did was they, they channeled out a groove for the stitching so you won't wear through that stitching on the outsole as quickly. You still will. And that's not gonna make the boot fall apart or anything like that. What more can I say about this leather? This is just such a beautiful shade of blue. My God. They call it navy, but I think it's more of just a regular sort of a French royal blue color. It's really beautiful. This French leather is really really nice stuff very luxurious stuff smooth supple there's no pull up to it just a beautiful boot all around like seriously andrew knocked this pair out of the park this makeup was very well done very well orchestrated like i said my elmwood chelsea boots i'm very blown away by those parkhurst is doing better i think than they've ever done to date so if you're interested in this particular pair of boots and you don't have any navy mock toes, well, you're in luck. You can get in on that by the end of the year, secure yourself a pair because 
Andrew is doing another run of these, and I think that is a very smart choice. From an aesthetics perspective, I have always loved the look of blue leather against natural leather. For some reason, I just find that combination so striking. So many traditional boot and shoemakers, what they do with the sole edge is stain it like a dark brown or even a black. That's a mistake in my opinion. I do not like the look of a black stained edge against navy. I love the natural. Not to mention the last, I can tell, it's definitely a little bit roomier than the older builds offered by Parkhurst. These were my first pair of Parkhurst in Ray's Reverse Waxed Mohawk. Now this is a, an excellent fit. I love the fit. I wouldn't have sized any differently in retrospect, but since this was my first pair, I was actually debating like, do these run true to size or not? I was in my head debating it. With this, there is no debate. This is definitely going a half down from Brannock is the right move with the new updated lasts for sure. I would not recommend going true to size unless it, like Andrew stipulates on his website if you have a, a wide foot depending on the width of your foot you might need to go true to size I do have a wide foot but I'm a nine Brannock and no question about it going a half down to an eight and a half from a nine Brannock was the right move on this pair yeah there was just a little bit of constriction nothing that was uncomfortable at all at the time I thought maybe maybe these run a little smaller than a half size large but like i said with this new pair no question about it go go the half size down if you have a standard foot you will not be disappointed in the fit at all it's really cool on the inside we've got a serial number 48418 18014 eight and a half made in spain and then what i really love about this pair in particular is the eyelets on the inside on this Rage reverse mohawk pair the eyelets are, are closed off in a, in a star configuration. But yeah, these eyelets are shown with like really nice medallion hardware on the inside. Very beautiful. I, I think that's a nice touch as compared to these brass eyelets on the Razor Reverse Wax Mohawk. These, these are stamped in, in place and have like prongs holding them in place. This is a lot more secure and a lot more pretty to look at. Not to mention these are fully lined as compared to my Rays Reverse Wax Mohawks, not lined. A glove-like feel on the inside, definitely inching closer to Alden here, Alden territory here for sure. At the price of $438, currently Aldens are $610, you're getting a, basically the same thing at a far better price in my opinion. All right, and then so you knew this was coming comparison time. All right, so here we go for the comparisons. So here we've got my Grant Stone Ottawa boots in midnight suede. So this is a dark navy blue suede. Beautiful. This is their Ottawa boot model. Vamp is all one piece. Apron vamp, all the all one piece. It's got a hand stitched mock here, also cosmetic. And then we have the Norwegian split toe here. And then here we have my Alden Navy Chrome XL tanker boots. Uh, I believe this was my third pair of Aldens ever. I think I got these back in 2014, 2015. Love the hell out of these. Been wearing them hard, very hard over the years. And same thing. So it's a Norwegian split toe. So again, vamp is all one piece. The hand stitching is all cosmetic. We've got a Alden Commando Soul here. And uh, yeah, look at that. All my blue mock toe boots. By far the Parkhurst are the bluest of the blue boots for sure. This French calfskin is far, far bluer than the Navy Chrome XL here. The Navy Chrome XL is so dark it looks black in some lights. And then this Midnight Suede on the Grant Stone Ottawa's is also very dark. So let's do a little size comparison. So we got left boot, left boot. And so the Parkers do appear to be a half size shorter than the Aldens here. This is probably why I thought they went were true to size at first. But then, yeah, when you look at the width, I would say I would say if your Aldens are a little generous fitting, which these are on me, then the same size in Parkhurst will fit a little smaller, but uh, these are a perfect fit. No questions about the fit on this pair. I've been rocking them with like medium weight socks and the fit is is very good. Uh, Grant Stone to Parkhurst. Yeah, the Grant Stones also appear to be maybe a half size longer there as well. But we've got very, very similar toe profiles here going on. Very similar, really sleek look here. Yeah, let's look at the backs of the boot. The Parkers have a single back heel strip on the back stay. The Aldens have a also a single back heel strip on the back stay. The Aldens are a little bit more curvaceous. 
the Grant Stone Ottawa's have a one separate piece for the back heel stay and then a back heel strip on top of that. Very stylish. And then, uh, yeah, just noticed all three have 360 degree split reverse welts going on. So these are basically more or less all the same boot. They're all lined with looks like glove lining. The Aldens have an extra rim stitch on the inside here, whereas the Grant Stones don't, the Parkhurst does not. So yeah, the Aldens have an extra stitching along the rim there, which is, which is pretty cool. So we've got finished edging all along here too, along the throat and along the shaft opening, which is not on the raised reverse waxed mohawk. The edging here is all unfinished, but it's just a stylistic difference. It in no way impacts the longevity or the quality of the boot. So I wore these about three days this week. And like I said, just loving it, loving the fit, loving the feel. They go really well with khakis, with duck. They go really well with my olive green trousers. I'm just a sucker for blue and these definitely don't disappoint. These are absolutely incredible boots. So anyways, that'll do it for now. Uh, please leave me your thoughts in the comments below. What do you guys think of these new beautiful Niagara boots? I think they're a wonderful alternative to the Alden Indy. The only problem is, is the availability, you know, due to supply issues, supply chain issues. Andrew's been really fighting hard to keep his stock alive and, and blooming. So that said though, his boots sell out very fast. If you're interested in a pair, I would definitely try to hop on those sooner than later. Leave me a like if you like the video. And uh, anyway, stay tuned. I got a lot more boot videos coming up.